On this episode of Game of the Month for July, we'll be discussing Earth Defense Force 5, the game we played throughout July, or at least we tried to play in July. Uh, we're going to talk about it, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned. But uh, yeah, we're in a new month, so make sure to download and play Hunters Arena Legends, Plants vs. Zombies, Battle for Neighborville, and Tennis World Tour 2, all off for free on PlayStation Plus. Make sure to download those, play those, come back at the end of the month for Plus Club. Let us know what we thought of those games. We'll let you know we thought of them. I also would like to thank everybody who joined the conversation over on Reddit for the most recent Plus Club. And if you missed that episode, make sure to check it out. It's a little janky, but um, we are finally getting things running as normal. So we got a set built. Uh, we may add to it, may not. I don't know. Um, audio is kind of weird right now, but we're getting it fixed, but we're getting back to normal. So very excited for that. If you'd like to listen to this podcast, you can check us out on iTunes, Spotify, or the podcast platforms. If you prefer to listen to us in audio form, you can visualize this whole thing with your ears. You don't even have to look at us. And we have a Patreon if you'd like to support this channel further than liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing if you're brand new. All right, let's find out what the game of the month for August is. Let's jump into game of the month. What's going on, guys? And welcome to July's episode of Game of the Month, the show where we pick a game at random every month, and at the end of the month, we talk about it. My name's Seth, and joining me, of course, is Chevy, my brother. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Uh, you know, still kind of recovering from the move, but uh, feeling better. So, yeah, I feel pretty good outside of um, getting everything set up, which I'm really stoked about. Actually, having a set again, um, but of course, with uh, rearranging everything and setting things up. I've come into um, some video and audio issues that I've had to troubleshoot, which is always fun, but we got something going on right now that seems to be working just fine. So I'm just gonna roll with it. Um, we had to talk about Earth Defense Force 5, which is a game that we actually played last August in 2020. 2020 was such a, a fucked year that I, uh, I kind of forgot we played it. Um, Luckily, I got some new stuff to talk about, which we will talk about. But before we do that, we got to pick a game of the month for August. That is this August that we're in. And we have a list of like 19 games that we're going to find uh, a game to play off of randomly generated. So, um, yeah, without further ado, we should probably just hop in and find out okay. where game of the month for August is. Cross my fingers for three games. I know it's on the list, but no way to know. It's all random. I have a randomly generated uh number generator that generates numbers i'm gonna hit this button right now i'm clicking it right now i'm going and when i let go it's going to give us a random number and i'll do that in three two one and go 17 uh cyberpunk 2077 <laughs> yeah okay we're gonna play cyberpunk 2077 that was just added to the list yep today so um what do you think <laughs> um i bought it and didn't really play it so gives me a reason to sit down and play it um they've had time to patch it so uh it's honestly probably good timing are you going to continue the character you dabbled with or start new i'll probably start over because i barely played I, I feel like that'd be the best way mm -hmm. to do it i have a character i have 20 hours in so for anybody who for anybody who played that game a lot um it's probably not very far but i did play the game so mm -hmm. i will get to see the original product and the new product so i'm actually kind of excited about that but also as anybody knows or most of you video on this fucking channel we were very hyped for this game um i've played already i liked what i played but definitely had issues i'm excited to actually have a reason to fucking jump in and play it because mm -hmm. i've been kind of waiting for these updates for the overall discussion of the game to to neutralize chill out yeah yeah um so I'm actually really interested in uh, in in this, um, given the last month and how much time I didn't have to play games. My brain's still like, do you have time to play Cyberpunk? <laughs> I'm going to make time because uh, this feels like this could be a really good conversation, a conversation I feel like we kind of have avoided for a long time. Um, so we yeah. finally get to talk about the game. So I'm pretty stoked for that. Yeah. I, the only thing I'm not stoked for is I literally just sent my 3080 to be... Uh, swapped out because uh if anyone has been keeping an eye on the new world uh information they uh they ran an alpha and during that alpha 
uh, certain GPUs, mine being one of them, uh, with uncapped frames fried the GPUs. So I'm waiting for a replacement. Yeah. Hey, can you think of another time a game beta came out and destroyed hardware? <laughs> no. Like that's such a, that's <laughs> not a cool thing. Like Amazon, what are you doing? I mean, they're covering like the warranty stuff, but then no, that's good. At least it's getting repaired. But at the same time, it'd be great if uh, replaced. But at the same time, it'd be great if they just didn't brick your shit. Yeah, I mean, I was a little more fortunate than some. Some people, their card literally just stopped working. Mine, uh, any game that like would try to like even use any juice, there's one my display would shut off. But I could play like a ton of like 2D indie games, no problem. Still, so I was still able to use my computer, but. Yeah, it didn't seem like you, you, but you did have like a weird issue, like everything shut off. Well, I could not play Final Fantasy XIV. Like, yeah. It would shut my display off as soon as I started the game. Which is a no-go. Yeah. It can't happen in this house. I am fortunate I do have a, I did have a backup uh, 960, so that's in my system right now. And I'll technically probably be able to play Cyberpunk on it, but uh, I'm hoping by the end of the month they'll send me my 3080 and I can crank it back up, so. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, look forward to playing it because I didn't. <laughs> For sure, yeah. I, I hope it's uh, it's been optimized well because when it first came out, it ran great on my computer, and then a patch came out and it didn't run great on my computer, and then I stopped playing it because everything and stuff like that. So yeah, very underbaked. Yeah, for sure. So we're gonna be playing Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven this month. Uh, for anybody on any side of the spectrum on on uh, that game and the conversation around it look forward to that conversation and uh yeah play it if uh if you haven't or if you have come back we're gonna have a lot to say on it all right so we played earth defense force 5 if you didn't get a chance to play earth defense force 5 it is the fifth of uh the earth defense force games in which you play one of four classes uh, that being wing diver um fencer uh air raider and ranger does that sound right? Ranger, fencer. Oh, I got the other three right. Ranger's Ranger. the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so those are the four. And uh, you essentially go from level to level, and there's over 100 levels in this game, um, killing giant bugs and other types of aliens as you try to defend the Earth from invasion. Um, it has ridiculous dialogue. Um charming bad graphics and a lot of weapons to unlock we both played it this month and how about we jump into your impressions of earth defense force before we do that real quick i just want to let people know uh, again we did play this less than a year ago we did grade it um, so if you're curious about that check that out and uh let's see if our grades have changed or gotten better or worse possibly yeah, I don't even remember what I actually originally graded it, so it'll be interesting to see because I'm kind of just going to go off what I did this month, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I didn't get to play as much as I would like due to obvious reasons, but um, Same. I did sit down and get a couple really good play sessions in, so I definitely got a good feel for it. Um, I played this before, like Seth has mentioned. Uh, we, I believe primarily, you didn't play on console at all this month, did you? No, I played all on PC. I, I, I uninstalled it from my console. Yeah, okay. So it's gone. I don't plan on ever <laughs> playing it again on there. <laughs> played on PC. Um and the one thing I will say after that is the game is <clears throat> very well made for PC. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything that's kind of confusing or weird about anything about it is on the console as well, like the UI and fucking yeah, going through settings and shit. Yeah, it's not well done, but that's not exacerbated by pc so yeah no it's, it's identical it actually <laughs> it, it plays way better on pc than i thought it would yeah the mouse specifically mouse control is always something i get kind of worried about when people specifically um something that i would just consider like a console game when it comes to pc they usually have really floaty mouse control and it feels awful and i actually feel like they did a really good job with that um in this and i i really do appreciate that like i can just like have a nice sensitivity aim where i want shoot where i want and it feels good so very responsive i really like that um also vehicle control works totally fine with keyboard and mouse and that game is not really like the best vehicle control to begin with but it is not made worse with a keyboard so mm -hmm. uh, again 
I have to give him credit for that. Um, and flying around as a wing diver feels as good as you would want it to feel. Good, good, good. I didn't play wing diver, so yeah. I have no idea. Um, I usually play. Oh no, what are they called? Uh, Air raider. Air raider. Yeah, they're like a engineer type class where they they have a bunch of gadgets and vehicles, and they're support driven. Um, but they do have weapons and they're usually explosive based. So, um, <clears throat> I made it to mission 70 something this time around, which is about halfway, uh, <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah. The game has got stuff to do. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. And each level has like four or five difficulties yeah. that you don't get credit for beating them unless you've five actually played them on the yeah. difficulty. It doesn't have that. Like you beat it on hard and you get the mark for all of them. You got to actually go play it on easy. Yeah. So if you're a completionist, you got a lot of shit to do. Yeah. Well, and the game does a really good job of um, scaling loot from level one to 140, whatever. And from easy to, whatever the top difficulty is, the loot keeps scaling. So um, there's always some loot to get. There's uh, permanent health upgrades. There's health packs during the missions too, because sometimes you'll get juggled around like crazy and then you're like, oh my God, I'm almost dead. Mm -hmm. um, I love the chaotic nature of the game. Like you kind of brought it up. You kind of just like, I mean, we, we've kind of said it before, but it's Earth, Earth Defense Force is a lot like um, Starship Troopers just you know, crazy B movie stuff. It's really, really, um, just, you know, live in that, that, uh, that fantasy of just going and slaughtering a bunch of like, yeah, it's the closest stuff. thing that exists of that. No one has had the balls to essentially make the game I've wanted since I saw yeah. Starship Troopers when I was younger and make a game where you're shooting a bunch of bugs. This is the closest thing you're getting. And quite frankly, I think it's better because they don't stop there. They go even further with their yeah, imagination yeah. because the game is absolutely fucking crazy. Yeah. You go from fighting, you know, giant ants to like grays, which are the size of skyscrapers. Like, yep. uh, the imagination is wild. Well, and like it doesn't take point, itself crazy seriously. So it doesn't take itself serious at all. In fact, it goes the opposite direction. Yeah, it's, it's like, we're not serious. Yeah. It's all about the fun. Yeah. And uh, I super appreciate that. Like same reason I play like Dynasty Warriors. It's just a fun. It's, it's literally Dynasty Warriors, except for with guns and bugs. Yeah. Because you're just killing crowds of people for fucking loot. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's four player. Yep. Co-op, which is amazing. Yep. Um. I have nothing but good things to say about this game. I like, I literally can't think of a bad thing about it other than like, if you're looking for triple A polish, you're not going to find it. Like, if you're looking for a triple A <laughs> story style game, this isn't it. But if you're looking for fucking fun, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's, it's a third person shooter. And so, I mean, most people will get that down. It's got vehicles. It's got a bunch of shit to shoot. It's got stuff to unlock. It's got things to upgrade. Yeah. Um, it is it is a game to be fun that is fun and yeah. they, they nail that well and the play like we've already said the amount of missions and difficulties the playability is insane um yeah it's not like there's like 40 missions you know you'll enjoy yourself a little bit but you'll run you know eventually you'll be done with it no it's it's got a lot to do it's yeah. it's it's a full ass game i mean to give context to that to kind of give you like a big picture mission 70 on easy one character my completion is three percent yeah so big game yeah every time i see i think my completion the last time i checked was at like one or two percent so it's insane yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of daunting when you look at that you're like oh shit there's there's a lot to do here yeah. so um yeah i mean really i don't even know like what i could tell them to improve because they they know what they're doing with it i really feel that so um I mean, honestly, whenever they make six, which they're we're making right now, yeah, yeah, um, saw on Twitter. So. Do what you do. Give me more places to destroy everything in sight with more types of enemies, or change it up, keep the same enemies and add more like surprises, uh, more weapon types while keeping all the weapons you already have. Um, maybe add some things to make destruction crazier. I don't know, but than that, like the formula is fucking solid. Yeah. So, um, it's also crazy because like. It's not like a crazy, like good looking game, but there's a ton of buildings and they're all destructible. They all yeah. crumble eventually. So, I mean, that's, that's, I can only imagine is the reason why they try and keep the graphics yeah. at, a, at a certain level, because what they're doing would be really hard to render in a triple A way for sure. And why do it if you don't need to, like yeah. anyone who plays these games and enjoys them doesn't care. I also have to say this is one of the only games I've, 
I've played where like I could be like in a whatever mood when I start, and by the time I'm done, I'm like smiling and laughing by the time because it's so ridiculous yeah. and fun. So like, well, and I, every mission, every time you unlock some new weapons, like oh, I'm gonna try this thing out, and something goes awry or like you know something cool happens. Yeah. There's there's always every mission always has something to offer that that is just uh, adds to the fun factor. It's yeah. it's a very enjoyable game. Yeah, and then it does have a social uh, menu too, where you can like sing songs and people can add on to the next part of the chorus. And uh, it's yeah, it's just completely designed to be a social fun experience. The EDF Twitter every once in a while just uh, starts. They they uh, they'll tweet the beginning of one of the. We are the mighty infantry. Yeah, they'll just type <laughs> that out and send it out there, and people just complete it. Yeah. And there's people all over the place. And this this one guy on Twitter uh, a couple days ago. When they did that, he uh, he just like repeated over and over again. We are the mighty. 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 Mighty. And I was like, "Was this me?" Because a lot of times I'll just spam it over and over again just to hear him repeat it over and over again. <laughs> so even even on the inside joke, there's an inside joke. Like <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I'm just gonna keep gushing. So I mean, yeah. Well, and we've already talked about this game and the details of it extensively on the original game of the month so for me this is more of an update um first off i'll start out by saying and it's already been made apparent we both like this game a lot and uh i would recommend you go check it out we'll talk about recommendations in a little bit but just go check it out you, you'll probably like it but um but yeah you, we go over all the details but as an update last time we did this on game of the month um i played on ps4 because i had originally bought on ps4 because i bought 4.1 on ps4 and typically the people who play these games uh with me uh are over there uh last time you guys played on pc and i was playing on ps4 and i thought about picking up on pc but i was like eh, i already got it well i'll just go play it here uh this time around um i think it was on sale so i, I just like it was half I was half, like, yeah. yeah so i was like yeah fuck it i'll buy it and uh, I'm glad I did because I assumed it was going to be good on PC, but it, it plays really good on PC. There's no issues at all. Um, coming from a controller over to mouse and keyboard, the um, I had to change sensitivity a little bit, but it's it has a it's very tight, uh, which is very surprising. Yeah. Um, I was expecting it to feel kind of loose or kind of janky, or I have to do some big fine tuning. Not really. I just kind of changed um, some stuff up a little bit and. Uh, the aiming was very precise, felt really good. All the buttons make sense. It's not a super complicated game, but um, some people, especially on a game that feels console centric, get really creative on what to do with the keyboard. <laughs> yeah. And it's very straightforward. It's like really simple and it makes sense. Um, so I enjoyed that. Uh, the graphics do look a little smoother on console or on PC, as you would assume. Um, but the big thing is the performance is a lot better on PC. Uh, on PS4, it runs fine, but when it gets really crazy, you can run into some stuttering, some lag sometimes, uh, especially when you play split screen, but that kind of makes sense. Um, to the point where it almost felt like, because the game is so ridiculous, it kind of was like a joke. Like, oh, there it goes. It's fucking yeah. lagging or whatever. On PC, it didn't, didn't happen. There's no lag. On yeah, my PC, yeah. on my PC, none. There's nothing. So um, that's appreciated on an optimization level. The game runs great. It's not the best looking thing in the world, but it would lag out a PS4. So obviously my computer is more powerful than PS4, but um, optimization is great. So controls great. Optimization is good. Looks very clean. Um, and yeah, I overall very much prefer it on PC. I'm glad I picked it up on PC. In fact, after my first play session on PC, I just went to my PS4 and uninstalled. I was like, I'm not going to play it there ever again. <laughs> Next EDF, I'll buy on PC. Um, they've proven to me that they can uh, port it over to PC really well, and it, it, it plays great, it looks great, blah, 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 blah. Um, so what did I do this time around? Well, I had to start from the beginning again. Uh, I've played this game quite a bit on PS4, and all that progress is on PS4 and never to be touched again. So I started from the... I had to restart twice this month, which is annoying. Um, I kind of already told people before, but I played offline mode because in my brain I was like, hey, I'll just play on offline mode. It makes sense. I'm, I'm on my own. And uh, got, you know, to like mission 11 or some shit. Uh, so not too far, but some missions can last like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, depending on, especially if you're by yourself, you know, the enemy types and stuff like that. For sure. Um, 
And then I realized uh, all of your unlocks move over to the online mode, but your mission progress does not go to online. They're separate. I'm sure there's a lot of balancing reasons on why they do that. Um, so when I went over to online mode, um, I had lost all my missions, so I had to start over, which is kind of annoying because the first two or three missions of this game are really fucking annoying. They're, uh, the first one is really bad, yeah. Well, the first one, there's like no action. You yeah. shoot like one thing at the end. You walk. Uh, <laughs> and I can kind of appreciate what they're trying to do because in 4.1, these are like really kind of cheesy games that just yeah. kind of go, well, well, there's things to shoot, shoot them. And in this, you can tell they're trying to maybe appeal to more audiences. So they have a, they're trying to make like a proper tutorial. Well, what they do essentially is they give you this level where this guy kind of talks a lot and you follow him around and every once in a while offers you basic things to do to learn the controls. Um, it's completely unneeded in the sense of a tutorial. This game is not complicated. Um, the weapons sometimes are weird. You know, learn them pretty quickly through trial and error, which is kind of the fun of the game. Yeah. But um, there is no reason this game needs to teach you how to do these things. Um, so that level sucks and I had to do it twice. Um, and it lasts a while. It's really annoying. Um, but outside of that, I, uh, I, I progressed again. I put a bunch of hours into it. Um, I don't remember how far I got. But um, I played online with randos. Uh, and I believe the Japanese servers and, and I think all the servers just work together. Probably. Because I was running to people who were from Japan and other places. Um, and with the simplicity of what this game is... Uh, you only got to communicate with each other, which is great. <laughs> I I played with a with a team of uh, three other people, so four of us together, and it was a blast. And uh, we don't have to coordinate anything. We don't have to talk to each other. The game has, like you said, um, uh, chat stuff where you can hold a button down and say stuff, which people were doing. Um, mostly a lot of the the meme type stuff that that this community uh, all knows about, but um. But yeah, we were able to play together. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was cool because the first time I played with the randos, um, everybody just picked different classes. I don't know if that was on accident or on purpose, but um, we're all playing different stuff. So I got to kind of get a uh, experience of, because um, I think the most people I've ever played with together was you, me, and Josh. I think one so. One time, a long time ago. Yeah. And that was fun too. But um, this game, so, some games I, I like to play by myself. Some games I like to play because it feels like they're meant for multiplayer. This game definitely will let you do both, but because of the chaotic nature of this and that there's not a whole lot of like, oh man, my teammate's going to fuck this up. This game is fuck things up. Like that's what Including you do. your teammates sometimes. Exactly. So yeah. if you got four people <laughs> and they're all killing shit, it, it, it feels like this game at 100% what this game's supposed to be. Because when you're by yourself and you're fighting all these fucking insects and stuff, it's fun. And you're like, well, this is crazy. But it feels better when you got three other people with you who are also doing the same thing. It, it adds to the chaotic nature of the game, and it really feels like the way the game should be played. Even playing with one person is fun, but mm. the four-person gameplay that I that I played um, was a blast. And uh, and it, it's fun, and there's curveballs that get thrown. People go down. you got to go get them and shit like that. Um, but I really liked it. Uh, I also I typically play um, Wing Diver. Um, I like their mobility. Their weapons are hit or miss, but when they hit, they're really good. When they miss, they're horrible. So hard to miss because they're just disco shows. Some of them, yeah. <laughs> um, if you don't know much about wing divers, they essentially have a energy reservoir they use to fly around, but they share that with their weapon. Uh, their weapons sometimes use that uh, energy bar or will expel all their ammo and use the energy bar to reload, which can be kind of a balancing act, which, which I like. Um, but you get mobility that the other classes don't get, um, which is the biggest reason I like playing wing diver. It's not the weapons, it's the mobility. Um, they're also really good for picking up all the items on the map because you get around faster. <laughs> Um, when I'm not playing wing, di wing diver, I play ranger just because they're a very straightforward, uh, you think of like a normal traditional weapon. They probably got it. Machine guns, rocket launch, stuff like that. They're a soldier class. They have a sprint button. Um, they have a sprint button, <laughs> which I'm actually not a fan of. There's like this weird, like cooking up time of like going from running normal to full speed that feels really sluggish. I'm glad they added a run button because it feels like. Most classes should have something like that. They should all have a little bit more mobility, but it can't be 
it can't take away from the wing diver. So I, I got to do the link roll. Yeah. Why well, still do that with the <laughs> Ranger? It's still faster. So um, if there's like a long field I got to get across, yeah, I'll hold shift. But most of the time when I'm trying to get to like items quickly, I just roll left and right constantly. Yeah. Um, there's a roll button in the game and, and you can, if you kind of roll to your side, you can kind of yeah, you do get around diagonal motion. Yeah. yeah. And you get it down pretty quick. Cause you're like, I move so slow. I have to learn how to do this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, when I'm not playing wing diver, I typically play Rangers cause it's, it's for a game with all these enemies coming at you. It's nice. Sometimes just have a fucking just straight up machine gun that you shoot and reload oh, yeah, for and sure. then having some kind of explosive, um, yeah, Plus, it gives you that true rocket launchers and machine guns, and it gives you that Starship Troopers fucking vibe yeah. where you're just a soldier fucking unloading. Um, I think you also get basic tanks too. I don't remember. Huh. I don't remember that. Um, I know they have like uh, sprays for healing and shields and stuff like that. Yeah. Though, so that they have some kind of support. Um, I didn't really dive into the um, air raider or whatever the fuck they're called um, this time around. I've played them in the past, but this month I didn't really touch it. But this month I did dabble. I forced myself to play the fencer, which if you don't know what that is, it's essentially kind of a armored type. It's kind of a tank type character. They have the most armor by default. Uh, so when you upgrade all their armor types or all the armors of the classes, theirs is going to be the highest. Um, they can take a lot of hits, but they move slow. They're essentially a mini mech. Um, you're a person who walks really slow, but you have a boost. Well, it's funny because in the other Earth Defense Force, you just had a boost. And this, you have uh, things you can equip to your suit. Right. Each class has that now, which I, I think is cool. And you can choose to have a double boost or more boost or faster recharge on that boost. Yeah. More up your armor. I honestly feel like the aerator has the least mobility for the character model. Yeah, outside the vehicles. Yes. Which when I played with those randos, one guy was very used to playing air raider because he was just driving around fucking hauling ass <laughs> i saw i saw items and he just go ding 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 just grabbing them up and shit so he was definitely familiar with it yeah uh, it's kind of refreshing to see someone actually driving around a lot of times i don't see people using the vehicles that often um but yeah i played fencer a lot uh, a couple of the other things that they kind of have going on is uh most people have like some kind of armor slot they have two armor slots so you get some uh, you can play around with some options there um they have a right hand and a left hand weapon, which is different than the other classes, but they also have a secondary right hand and left hand weapon. So you can kind of come out as a mobile like fortress. Um, you can have like a Gatling gun on one arm and a sword on the other, and then switch over to a hammer in one hand and a missile launcher in the other hand. Uh, most of the weapons move slow and sluggish, but they do a lot of damage. Um, and these guys can take a lot of damage. So. Uh, the way I had mine built is like I was like boosting. I had the double boost, but I would boost once, hit a dude, and then boost the second time, hit another guy, boost again. And I, the recharge was just enough that I could boost, swing, boost, swing, boost, swing. I kind of felt like a Gundam just like sliding around, swinging yeah, yeah. and shit. It's pretty cool. I actually really enjoyed it. I want to level it further or play more just to kind of see how crazy you can probably get with the fencer. Yeah, I, I kind of... Every time I get new toys with the Air Raider, I wonder. I'm like, man, I just keep unlocking crazy and crazier stuff. I can only imagine. I have to have really dabbled in the other three classes that yeah. much. So I imagine they also get these crazier and crazier things. I think that about all my classes when I keep getting new and newer <laughs> shit. I'm like, what do the other ones have? Yeah. <laughs> if, if this, that, that, that's the thing this game does really good is all the classes are very different. Yeah. They all serve a purpose, but I think that's less interesting because, like, you could play with like four wing divers, you can play with four rangers, yeah. you can play, it doesn't matter because you're just killing shit. Yeah, it's not really a meta to worry about. But the stuff they unlock is very different from each other. You don't need to use all stuff to work together, but the imagination on what the wing diver gets, what the air raider gets, what's what the fencer gets is, is very different. So, you get different experiences playing these. So, whatever your play type is there's a class for that but also there could be stuff to unlock for a class that you think might not be your play type uh which i really dig and i think they did a really good job in five uh as opposed to 4.1 which 4.1 is fucking amazing i love 4.1 five feels like it's trying to allow you to play with your classes more and i can appreciate that also um as you unlock weapons just like in 4.1 by finding boxes um, you get more stuff, but before you got boxes, if you got duplicates, you didn't get anything. Now it upgrades a weapon you already had. So say I, I have this pistol and I find the pistol again. It doesn't just go nowhere. It actually makes that pistol better now. So 
Yeah, it might no. give you like a little faster reload or yeah. more ammo capability or so something. So no boxes wasted, which yeah. I really appreciate. Um, yeah, it's a good system. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's these, it's the perfect refinements for a game. I don't want them to change too much. Oh, I yeah, think for sure. I think they're good compromises. Um, they are evolving the game a little bit, but it still feels uh, like four point one, um, just with uh, like I said, refinements. Mm -hmm. So, um, mission types are to be expected. Um, for Earth Defense Force, you start out with the uh, with uh, insects. You move into some more sci-fi type shit pretty quickly. Um, this game moves in a lot faster than four point one did. Uh, also, does some pretty heavy uh, hit point, like uh, high hit point monsters that you pretty fast in the game too. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't wait very long to start introducing stuff like that to you. Uh, I almost feels like they assume you played 4.1, which I don't think they're too far off because if you're playing Earth Defense Force, you probably are initiated already. Yeah, the only one I noticed, which was really bizarre to me, is in 4.1, the spiders that hang out in the webs are very early in the game. Yeah. They're like mission like 50, 60 in this game. It's kind of crazy. On mission like six, there's um, they're not on the webs. They're the ones that jump. The jumping ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, the web ones are like halfway through the game. It's really weird. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't get there yeah. um, on this playthrough. So, but I know which ones you're talking about because yeah, they're really early on. Really four point one. Yeah, they're like in the first ten levels. Um, but you're like fighting the frogmen by like mission eight or nine. Oh yeah. In in five, and I got some hit points, which is really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they regenerate. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was playing that mission while I was by myself, and I almost got them all, but I ended up dying, which I'm not used to doing. I was like, oh, shit, okay. I'll uh, come back with people. Because they just, like, flank you and just shoot at you, and I'm hiding in alleyways, but they'll just, like, shoot down the alleyway. And they're I also everywhere. feel like they did, a, not to give them too much credit here, but the AI does seem a little better with the bipeds, where they do try to take cover a lot more. So Yeah, they're... It's not like amazing AI, but it's effective AI. Yeah. It, it does what it needs to do. So I don't remember like really doing a whole lot of that four point one. So it feels like, specifically with the frogs and the grays, that they're actually trying not to get hit. Yeah. So, which is cool. Yeah. They, I mean, they should if they're going to be shooting at you and stuff. So. Yeah. Um, it would suck if they had the same AI. It's like the ants and they just come running at you the whole time. <laughs> um. Which I mean works because ants they're they're dumb, so it makes sense. Um anything else to add on on my update? Play on PC, like it there. Um played the fencer more than I normally do. It was enjoying it definitely. I want to play air raider a little bit, but that one's like as much as I like it as a class, it's not my style, but I think it's one of the cooler classes for sure. Um has the weirdest weapons. Ooh, I don't know. Wing Diver has some fucking weird weapons. Wow, that's fair. But I, I just mean like the soup that like because you're lobbing things. Yeah. So I I didn't play this one enough to know, but in four point one there was weapons that Rangers had that had the lock on via uh, air raider. They're in this stuff. Lazing. Okay. Because I always thought that was really cool. Yeah. You also get lots of um. There's there was they were in four point one as well, but there's a ton of them. In this one where like you can call an airstrikes or ship bombardments mm. or satellite lasers and stuff like that yeah uh, i don't have a mech yet in this one because in 4.1 remember that giant mech i ended up getting that literally i could just like walk and had room like for three other people to like oh yeah no no i don't i don't, I, I don't remember your mech i had i had a bunch of mechs oh, so yeah. and that's as far as i know about them uh i've not seen any giant mechs yet in five but well, I also, the, the mechs vary in sizes too in 4.1 because there's like small mechs and there's like mechs the size of buildings well yeah so like i've had like the like like armored core like you know st style ones or whatever yeah but yeah in 4.1 i specifically remember one that was like yeah the size of a building it, it, yeah. like, it's huge the ants crawl on you yeah when you're in it um, um which is fucking crazy versus in this game i haven't really seen that yet um but i have seen a lot of variations of like smaller style mechs uh, even ones that have the same frame controlled completely different. I was like, oh, that's really cool that like this one's more of a flamethrower style one and this mm. one's actually like a missile boat. And so they did a really good job in varying it that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like that should be like 
towards the end of the game if they have any gigantic mechs. Could be a difficulty thing as well because I, I started on higher difficulty in 4.1 than I have in, in 5 mm. because I wanted to kind of just go through, you know, one difficulty, go through second difficulty. Go yeah, through. I found a level in 4.1. I got really far into 4.1, but I never beat it. I know Josh did, which is fucking wild. But, That's um, pretty crazy. <laughs> but uh, I found a level that seemed like really good to grind on, and I uh, – grinded on normal and then i went to hard and i went to the next difficulty and i just kept grinding that level to get more and more gear and that's why i got like so much shit really quickly and then um yeah i haven't done that in this one though haven't played it enough yeah there's definitely a couple missions where like i was doing it i was like this is one of those missions yeah early on there's one (laughs) called um ambush something like that and it's literally just it's a map that's like a creek in a little canyon and all the ants just pour in. Yeah, yeah. And I sometimes will go to that and just kill a bunch of shit and get boxes because they don't. It's not varied, so all the boxes are in the fucking river. Yeah, um, which works good for me. But yeah, all in all, great game. Still a lot of fun. Even better on PC. Um, I'm still thinking about how that's going to affect my grade. So we'll see. But that's pretty much all I got. It's yeah. it's an awesome game. Um, I would highly recommend. Speaking of that, let's jump to recommendations um unless you have anything more to say on impressions um i mean personally i would just recommend this to everybody it's a simple enough game that i think anybody who gets the concept of shooting things um in a third person fashion uh it's not a complicated uh control setup um would probably enjoy this game to varying degrees um i feel like a lot of people might be apprehensive to play this game because they're going to look at the graphics and go what the fuck is that yeah, you gotta but, that but just get your hands on and play it especially with friends and i don't know if you're gonna, i don't think you're gonna have a bad time um i've had one person in the community tell me they don't like the games i don't know if he's played them a whole lot or not but he says he doesn't like the game so and I'm, there's gonna be people like that but uh there's another person I know who's who's claimed to not like the games. Yeah. So, um, but most people don't probably don't even know what ETF is. So, uh, loosely, I would I would recommend it to everybody. More specifically, I would recommend it to people who like uh, up to four player cooperative shooters um, that are cooperative. Like uh, you're not going online playing against people. Blah blah blah. You're going from mission to mission, unlocking shit, and shooting stuff. If that sounds appealing to you in any degree. I would recommend this game to you if you have a fantasy of shooting stuff like in Starship Troopers, big groups of enemies attacking you all at once, uh, you're outnumbered, that kind of scenario. This is like one of the best games out there for that, Um, for sure. Uh, If you like destructibility um, in games, if you like the idea of destroying buildings, fighting kaiju, uh, mechs, that whole scenario, Godzilla type stuff. It's in there. It's one of the only games out there like that. <laughs> so uh, I would recommend it uh, for that as well. If you like games with a lot of unlocks, a lot of weapon types, a lot of uh, even if you play games like Ratchet and Clank and you like like the weapon variety in that game, um, you might dig this. This game's got a lot of crazy zany weapons. Sometimes weapons you're like, why is this here? Who would use this? Yeah. This game they upgrade so they do get better, which is kind of nice. Sometimes you get a weapon, you're like, what the fuck? And then you up- upgrade and you're like, oh, it's getting better. And 4.1, it's just like, this game's a fucking, or this game, this gun's a fucking dud. Like, I don't know why it's here. But it's cool it's there because you get to, the game has this, like, experimental nature to it as you're playing it. They're like, we think this will work. And it really kind of translates when you use all these crazy weapons. I actually think it's one of the only games I've ever played where every time we get a new piece of equipment, I'm like, I gotta try it. Yeah. It's like instantly my thought was like, I gotta see what that does. Yeah. It's not like a game where you unlock a new sword and the stats, you're like, oh, of course I'm gonna equip that. It's like, what does this do? Yeah. Then that, that is... That's honestly kind of rare in most games. Shooters, you're never going to get that. Like, you're going to get, like, a you're going to unlock a new fucking machine gun. We know what's going to do. Yeah. You're just going to see if it, the way it works works with the way you play. An RPG, typically, you know, this sword does this damage, but still a sword. And this, it's like, you got the the tortoise. It's like, what the, what the fuck is that? You pull out, you shoot it, it's a missile. It slowly moves across the sky, just kind of meandering. You're like, what the hell does that do? Hits, huge explosion, you're like, oh. Or the wing <laughs> diver, you get all these weapons with weird names. You don't know what it is. You read the thing, and you're like, uh, okay, that's crazy sounding. You take it out there, it's fucking bizarre shit. It does some weird stuff. It, yeah, it's a game that I'm always curious. Yeah. And you can only take so many weapons out with you, and I'm like, I want to try them all. Like, um... So yeah, if, if if you're attracted to games where 
you're you're gonna be trying all these crazy zany weapons it's a game for that um for sure um yeah like i said i would, I would recommend to most people but specifically that's where it really those are its major beats i think crazy firepower that kind of goes with the experimental yeah. weapons that i said before yeah um four player co-op yeah co-op looting uh leveling well leveling it comes with the loot i guess yeah. um if you miss the days of like quake where like when you shoot someone and they, they go into pieces the the bugs go into multiple pieces uh yeah and this one there's like blood which is weird on rid ridiculous amount of it sometimes yeah. sometimes you'll like i remember like I put one grenade on something. I shot it, and the entire building next to it just turned purple. <laughs> I was like, "Ew!" Yeah, it's it's excessive. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, yeah, and then I mean, if you just like that B movie vibe too, this this is just constantly full. The dialogue is is so bad to the point where like it's funny. Um, I don't know. Like I remember the frog show. They're like, they're just like us. How? How are they just like us? Yeah, the guy's like, they have two legs, so they're just like us. Yeah, I'm like, that's a frog. Yeah, it's a giant <laughs> frog person. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're self aware on that dialogue, though. 100%. But I mean, the, I, yeah, I would recommend it to people. I said this in the last episode, too, when we talked about this game. But, I, you know, if you're into like that 1950s, 60s fucking sci fi comic book, Flash Gordon shit, yeah. you might be into this because it's it definitely plays with that weird fucking aliens invading Earth yeah. like thing going on. Um, cheesy dialogue i think the only other really big thing is um if you're a person who's concerned about like or only have the the means to buy like a a, a small amount of games you're worried about bang for your buck this game is huge yeah. there's so much game this is a game i can play off and on for years always yeah. come back to and have a blast with so yeah it's definitely it's definitely one of those games that you're gonna get a lot of if, if you enjoy it, you're gonna get a lot of gameplay yeah. out of it and then even outside of like us specifically talking about df5 if EDF 4.1 is, is less expensive, still worth it. Yeah, 100%. So I think they're both great. I don't yeah. think 5 makes 4.1. No, they're like both completely any, yeah, playable both awesome. at any time. So um, That's the thing. Five, 5 has more to offer, and I would still, if I didn't have 5, I would just go back and play 4.1. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of comes off like, this is going to be a weird example. Um, maybe I shouldn't use it because of the, the state of the company right now, but let's say you have... Uh, an ARPG from 10 years ago, and then they made another one uh, newer. Uh, they're both still fun. They just, one's a little older, right? So uh, I think yeah. I think it's a lot like that. So Are you talking like Diablo 2 to Diablo 3? Yeah. Only yeah. <laughs> so. well, that company was uh, in a respectable position right now. Agreed. Um, but I do think outside of if you just can't handle... Um, if you need that AAA polish, you're you're not gonna really find that here. And if you need like the game to be like serious, yeah, you're, you're looking at the rocks. No, yeah. you're not gonna like it at all. If you can't handle like campiness, it's a very yeah. campy game on purpose. Um, sometimes people will hear the dialogue and think like the the game is just like, you know, on accident like bad. I'm yeah. like, no, they know. Yeah. Like the dialogue is so self aware, it's stupid. Um, which I like. It's it's funny. Um. Yeah, anything else? All right. Uh, Got to grade it. I'm teeter-tottering here. Um, So originally I gave this a B plus. I gave it a very high B plus. Uh, and the idea of giving it an A, I, I remember in the episode I was saying that I wanted to give it an A minus, but it's like the idea of giving this game a, an A minus is kind of wild because it's kind of a shitty game in the way it looks visually even though i like the way it looks it looks like you know not that great but the fun factor is so good it's like if i think of games that are fun this is one of, this is one at the top like there's all there's so many fun games but this game is just made to be fun it's very fun i think i'm gonna give it that a minus um it's a light a minus i typically reserve a's for games that impact me but um I guess playing it on PC, getting that little extra enjoyment out of it through that and just really loving what they do with these games and taking the risk that they do 
um, with making you know a, a lower end looking game that has so much content, so much fun things to do. Plus the multiplayer, um, it really stands on its own. Doesn't really have any competition. No one's competing with EDF. Not that they need to really, but there is no games in the genre. This is it's just EDF, and it's great, and I think it deserves a little bit more praise for that. So I'm gonna go with an A minus. Yeah. Um, I think it's an easy A minus for me. Uh. I, I feel guilty for giving it that because I'm like, the great games deserve to be there, but well, here, it is a great game. This is my reasoning, right? I have nothing to complain about it, but I do want to give them a little bit of room to improve it. That's pretty much where my mind's at at it. But I can sit down and play this game pretty much any time yeah. uh, with any amount of people. And because of the way the game's designed, I don't need to play with a certain type of person really for this game because mm-hmm. they're not going to make my experience worse. We're either going to be efficient That's a real thing. or it's going to be chaos. Yeah. And both are going to be fun. In certain multiplayer games, I will only play with certain people. Yeah. Depending on what it is. This game, I think I could just play with anybody. Yeah, because if you're just fucking around, like yeah. that that's okay, we're just we're going ham. Cool, let's go. Yeah. So well, somebody's fucking around and like just doing dumb shit. Eventually, the enemies are going to be up their ass. They're going to have to get their shit together or die. Yeah, the so, only thing that's going to be annoying is if they were team killing constantly. Yeah, then you're just being shitty. Which would be annoying. But that's any game, yeah. yeah. But yeah, for sure. That's a great point, though. And we already kind of emphasized that a bit. But uh, I could play this game at any time, any year, with people, without people. I'm always going to have fun. There's some games I got to be in a mood for, but like you know, maybe I'm not even thinking about EDF, but if I just turned it on start playing it, I'm going to play it. Yeah, and I kind of brought that up earlier where I could just be like kind of out of it, right? And still sit down and play this game and it literally will make me have a better mood by the time I'm done. Yeah, so. for sure. It's worth something. So yeah. I've upgraded my B plus to an A minus. You originally gave it an A minus. You're maintaining the oh, goodness. <laughs> Yeah, you went high the original time, um, which is surprising because me and Chris both gave it B pluses. My B plus was like one to go. A. I literally mentioned that I was like, I want to give it an A minus, but I feel like yeah. it seems like a bit much. But no, nah, thinking about it now, I'm like, no, I, I it, it's good. It's good. I love it. It's a really good game. I'm a big fan of EDF. So yeah. um, for a game of its nature, I think it deserves high grade, high praise. So um yeah, those are our grades. Let us know in the comments. Have you played EDF? Any of them, but have you played five? What do you think of it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? What don't you like about it? What do you like about it? If you haven't played it, why haven't you played it? Um, are you interested in it that we've given it A minuses now? Um, does that make you want to try the game? And uh, yeah, let us know some other maybe sleeper games, games that don't get enough recognition, um, games that have tight communities uh games that might not look that great but are great kind of like way of the samurai back in the day those kind of weird one-off games that were great um let us know everything you think about in the comments below but that's gonna do it for this episode of game of the month reminder cyberpunk 2077 is our game of the month so make sure to play that or if you played it before or plan on playing in the future come back at the end of the month for that that's good for this episode. So thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this episode. Make sure to check out our other episodes. Uh, check us out on uh, Discord link down below. Uh, Patreon if you like to support this channel. More than liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing. If you're brand new. And uh, iTunes, Spotify, other podcast platforms if you'd like to listen to us uh, when you're off doing whatever the fuck you do. Um, my name's Seth. Thank you for joining me, Chevy. And until the next episode, which will be a traditional tasty cast weird let's hope let's fucking pray um until then have a good week guys and take it easy